Hey, what's up, everyone? AJ Writes Crypto here. I'm just going to cut straight to it. We need to have an honest, honest conversation about the crypto market at large. We have seen an incredible run up, an unexpected run up from you know late last year into now. And we are in a predicament, not only with the stock market, but with the stock market, consequently with Bitcoin and consequently with the altcoins. I'm about to show you 13, 13 charts that are connected in a way. And I want you in for every one of these charts, I want you on your chart at home to copy this and set these levels yourself. So these will, if these alarms go off, you know what to do. I do things called conditional trades. If we break this line, we go long. If we break this line, we go short, you know, unless it's a, like a false flag type situation. So let, first of all, we got to start off by taking a look at this is the 24 hour past 24 hours for the top 100. We have, you know, five winners, Phantom and Ton being the two leaders that are on their own stories. But I feel like they will eventually catch up to the right side of the chart here where the smallest loser listed is are we down 6%. We had that little bounce yesterday. Everyone got very excited and I understand why. But really on larger time frames we were just testing the 200 and you know got swiftly and harshly rejected. Okay? So before I get into this, I do want to say that now I have a Telegram Alpha group. We have been absolutely nailing trades nailing trades in the telegram group left and right since the group started over two weeks ago got uh over 90 people in the group already if you want to join the group make sure you send me an email at aj alpha group at gmail.com and we will get you involved a lot of the charts you're going to see here have been some ideas we've talked about in the group and we're going to go a little bit further down the rabbit hole today so buckle your seatbelt. this is going to be one hell of a video so right here is the ES1 exclamation point chart, okay? The ES1 is basically just a fancy pants way to look at the stock market, all right? So this is, you know, a little chart that I had from a while back because here was the top of the 2021 bull run. As you can see, we're well above that now, all right? And here we were, and I was hoping at the time that we weren't going to double top because that would have been really bad. But now we're kind of in uncharted territory. We're kind of in uncharted territory because, you know, this thing has has just kept going and has kept going with little repercussion. May I, I mind you? OK, and look at the structure of this stock market chart here. All right. Just higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows the whole way up the street. All right. I am making the connection between these points here that kind of left it open and it has since tested the lower band of this uptrend. The difference between all of these and now is that we have really put in several lower highs, which is not good as we come into the test of the lower band of the uptrend. All right. There's no guarantee that we're going to lose it. We can still hold it. It's not the end of the world, but you need to be able to react to the market if we do lose it. Okay. And we have already tested it here. So draw this line. Draw this line on your chart at home. Oh, let me get you a better angle for it. Two hour chart. Connect those dots. Draw that line. Set an alarm on it. Go here. Press the alarm button. Click once per bar. So it'll go, you get an alarm. You can text messages and email every time it crosses that alarm. Click create. That alarm is set. Okay. Hopefully it doesn't go off during this video. So you, you might be thinking, AJ, why are we looking at the stock market? Why are we looking at the stock market right now? Well, first of all, uh, the correlation is not causation. But I do feel that there, it, especially with the ETF money that has come in, there is certainly a connection between the stock market and crypto. There's no question about that. And when does a chart ever just come up like this and never pay the price? This is the laws of gravity, everybody. You know how you want, want to know how I know this? Because I look at Bitcoin on the daily. I look at Bitcoin on the daily. And look at this run up here. It looks kind of like the one we have here, right? The laws of gravity everybody all right so now look at the conditions though okay because here you know we were still well above the 50 ema right now we are still above the 50 ema with the price basically at we are the price we're at now is basically the same price as the top of the 2021 bull run in november that's where we are and the ema is right here 
All right. So we're still above the EMA, but kind of the giveaway is when Bitcoin dips below the EMA. And then after Bitcoin dips below the 50 EMA, the red line, it does not take long to test the 200 day. From the touch here to the day of the 200 test, it took what? 30 days? 30 days that time? What about this time? You touched the 50 EMA. How long did it take to touch the 200? 18 days. 18 days. It does not take long for 30 plus percent drops. It does happen, unfortunately. Let's zoom in to Bitcoin. I mean, I mean, just based off looking at this chart, we have to prepare ourselves for some sort of drop and pick up. I, you know, it's hard to tell exactly how long. We can make guesses based off volume, but you know, let's investigate a little bit more with Bitcoin. And and why am I doing this? Before I go into this, why am I doing this? I like to look at the stock market to make directional calls for Bitcoin. It has worked for me for years. And I look at Bitcoin to make directional coins for altcoins. And since we're generally, for the most part, trading altcoins, it's all connected. And I really like to take a holistic approach to the market. That has been my strategy from day one. So let, you know, let's zoom into Bitcoin a little bit. This right here is a two-hour chart. Yeah, you know, Not exactly sort of a type of symmetrical-ish triangle. Not exactly a symmetrical, but a triangle. You know, we're putting in, you know, lower highs, but higher lows. So at some point in time here, Bitcoin is going to have to either break out or break down on your chart at home on the two hour chart. Draw these levels, set alarms on these levels so you know what to do. This level here is kind of, you know, the the, the most recent value area for Bitcoin. I would definitely have an alarm there set at 61,400. That is a very important alarm. Even you know, uh, you know, smaller time frame stuff. Zooming in, Bitcoin has done a good job holding this level, uh, 68,234. 68, it has held this level. It, it might even be holding it this time. But this is certainly you know, um, it's, it's it's the alarm for the alarm, so to speak. Kind of a heads up. It's a heads up. You're can you're we're we're worried if we lose this level. We're concerned if we lose this one. Okay, I'll put it that way. I'll put it that way. So what about, you know, the rest of the picture? Let's look at like this, say the six hour. Okay. So what worries me about Bitcoin is, is kind of the volume situation. You know, look at the volume, the visible range volume profile on the right side of the screen. All right. So this is the volume for the value area that we're in. Okay. But as you can see, if we lose this support resistance level, the one I told you about, you know, 61,500 area, we swiftly fall off and enter a series of low volume nodes that don't even really start to wake up into around 51,000. The point of control where the most amount of volume is, is actually all the way down here at 42,000. We don't even want to imagine that. We want Bitcoin to bounce off of this and continue. But you need to be aware of what could happen because when you look back at the daily chart and you realize every time we've had this crazy run up, this happens. Crazy run up, this happens. Well, crazy run up, something has to happen. It can't just go up forever. This is the laws of gravity. Don't get me wrong. Am I still bullish long term? 100%. Do I think, am I sticking to the playbook of, you know, the having is basically in a couple days, a year and a half after the having will be the top? Yes, I'm sticking to the playbook. But because I'm sticking to the playbook and I know that the playbook is 18, 19 months away from now, there is going to be a correction. There has to be an ebb in the flow of the market. We cannot just go up and to the right forever as much as I wish we could. I'm not trying to come off as a perma bear, but I'm just coming off as a realistic trader. And when I see this, I have to imagine there is some sort uh, we're going to have to pay the piper here eventually. Okay, so we talked about Bitcoin. Make sure you alarm each side of the triangle and set the, you know, this is the concerned, worried, scared levels for Bitcoin. All right, let's look at Solana. We talked about this one over the weekend. This right here is a very important level for Solana to hold around 169, 170. You know why? Look at the, look at the volume. Look at the volume. Look at the low volume node. This volume right here is this value area. Getting re got rejected twice up here at around 203. Okay. And then the volume doesn't really pick up until down here to 100. The point of control actually back at 58. Let's not imagine that scenario. But it, it would make sense for Solana to come back here. These are all previous 
uh, you know, previous support resistance from way back here, 2022, you know, those levels are also relevant. But, you know, my point here is let's zoom in a little bit on Solana because this level has done a good job being held up. It would, I would love to see us just bounce off this level and continue. All right. The video I made about the Solana ecosystem was made right here. Uh, you know, kind of worried about it. It or actually, if you shorted from there, it would have been a little bit of a wonky trade, but we're, you know, we're up 4% on that short if you went from that moment. And I'm hoping that Solana can bounce off this level and continue. That would be amazing. But you need to be well aware that if Solana loses the $169 level because of the volume, we have a quick drop. As fast as Solana moved up is as fast as it could drop. Just look at previous price action and prove me right on that. Uh, Pyth. Okay, this is a coin that I really like. This is a coin I hold a lot of. Kind of a similar situation. All right, look at where it is. Look at the volume drop off. That volume drop off would take us back to this support resistance level down here. Uh, 68 cents. 68 cents. That would be a 14% drop. Not to mention the importing controls at 41 cents. We're not even going to talk about that. Zooming in, you know, Pyth has done a good job holding the floor. Hodor. Hodor. Okay, at 77 cents, 776 to be exact. That is your alarm level for Pyth. Whiff. Whiff is a chart that we have traded at length in the Telegram group. Look, look at this chart. AJ Chart Graffiti 101. All right. Not only did we nail the long from here to this top 20% trade, two days, 19%, not bad. Rejected from there. You know, another 16% down the other direction in one day. I like to target this chart for a couple of reasons. One, WIF has a lot, and I mean a lot, of liquidity on leverage exchanges, especially Femex. If you want to sign up for Femex, click the link down below in the description. I like to target the coins that have a lot of liquidity because you can do very large trades and quickly get in and out. And when you're talking, you know, a meme coin on Solana, uh, you know, you might have missed the you know initial 1,000% up and to the right. You might have missed that. But we're still talking a coin that where other coins move 2 to 4%. This coin's moving 10 to 20%. And you want to use that volatility to your advantage. In coins like this, I've been, I've been hitting this coin left and right. A lot of killer trades. And the level, the level of levels is already circled right here from this previous high. This support resistance level for WIF is at $3.53, almost $3.54. And look at what has happened. Let, let's really, let's investigate this, okay? Let's come on in here. You know, we were, we were in a downtrend until we weren't. And then we were in an uptrend. And then we were in an uptrend until we weren't, okay? You know, there was a couple dead giveaways in this chart that we talked about during the live stream. Just a quick, and we came up here. We stayed in once we got rejected, once we lost this local low, that was the cue to go short from the Telegram group. Uh, top to bottom, about a 13% trade right there. But look, you know, zooming in, small time frames, WIF is still doing trying as hard as it can to hold this very important support res resistance level at 353. Set an alarm on that level. Let's hope that it bounces up. Let's hope that it goes back to the moon. But you need to be aware of the implications if it loses that level. And that is kind of like kind of tethered to the idea. If Solana loses this level, if Solana loses this level, bet your bottom dollar that Pyth and Whiff are, will lose their levels as well. All right, let's talk about Render. Render is a chart we've been hitting a lot. You know, similar situation. It was in a downtrend until it wasn't. We caught this trade here about, you know, 10% in three days. Not bad since then has come back down, has come back down the hill here. Uh, you know, Render is kind of in one of those spots where it is holding. You know, it, it like there are a lot of charts right now that are just holding on for dear life at crucial support resistance levels. This is that level for Render, okay? Let's hope it bounces up. Let's hope it bounces up. But if it loses the $9.29 level, that is your cue to go short. Ton coin. All right. We're in an uptrend here. We're in a big time uptrend here. We're we're trying to break out of the top of the uptrend here. Shout out to Crypto Keeper called the ton coin trade way back here. I mean, he's up 200 percent He nailed that one. I'll give him props. Credit, he deserves the credit for that one. But let's investigate this. So 
it is in this pretty, you know, sick uptrend. Let's hope that it bounces off this and goes to the moon. But in the scenario where, let's keep in mind, if the stock market loses this level, comes down, it's just been going up and to the right forever. If the laws of gravity somehow eventually apply to the stock market, if the laws of gravity eventually apply to Bitcoin, you know, we have to think to ourselves, projects like TonCoin, altcoins like TonCoin are going to be you know, indirectly affected by those changes. So a big alarm level for TonCoin, $6.50. Another one, $6.28. You know, both of those conditional trades, if you lose that, short it. Also on the hour, it's kind of hard to ignore. Anchor wave, trigger wave. The price action has diverged from the oscillator. Bearish divergence on the one hour playing out. Uh, this thing has been extremely bullish. Um, you know, I, I'm not saying these things cannot continue, but I want you to be aware of these levels. If you if you start getting these alarms, you can start nailing these shorts and make money while everyone else is losing money. That's what I want you guys to do. That's why I'm making this video. Phantom. Phantom is a chart that we absolutely cannot get enough of in the group. We are hitting Phantom left and right in the group. We caught this short here. We caught the long here popped up. You know, you're in a downtrend until you're not. We got a quick breakout, you know, 20% in three days. Uh, even had a conditional uh, trade with Phantom last night. Basically, Phantom was in this range here, all right, in this range. And I said, if we lose this, short it, lose this, long it. Very simple, conditional trade. This was based off of volume from the volume that was above from the last time Phantom was over at this level. All right, so let's, from the alarm break, to the top 7.27%. Hey, 727, that's my birthday. Meant to be with the Phantom trade. Meant to be. So, you know, I do want to say now that Phantom is approaching this support resistance level. Okay? This one right here. If Phantom gets above that level a dollar two and continues, the party's on. The party's on. But, you know, small time frame stuff, uh, you know, you kind of want to consider where it, if it loses let me scroll this over a little bit. If we lose this level, this level here would be uh, 96 cents. And then this, you know, simp this local range, 94 cents. Uh, you know, we could, considering that a lot of the market is red right now, Phantom could be getting rejected off of this level. But that's why we're still going to set that alarm at a dollar two, a dollar three uh, to catch that, the continuation of that long. So basically, what I would imagine happening with Phantom is that if, you know, it could come up and come down and pop out that's generally what happens at levels like this uh but you know it has just been kind of going with zero consequence for a little bit little while now uh i wouldn't be surprised for this level to be a rejection and i wouldn't be surprised to see phantom you know ultimately lose seven percent six percent back to 94 uh local and we're talking very local scalp type trades for this one all right and um algorand this is a big one two hour chart you need to have these alarms set Two hour, we got this, you know, downtrend. We have, you know, a little triangle here, descending triangle. You have this alarm. We break this. We long it. We break this. We short it. All right. And we want to be aware of the macro. We want to be aware of what's happening with the stock market. We want to be aware of what's happening with Bitcoin. All right. It, it's approaching the point of intersection. What do I mean by the point of intersection? As in by April 17th. So by, you know, Wednesday, next Wednesday, Algorand will have already either broken out or broken down. This is a conditional trade. All right. It's very simple. Set those two alarms. Act accordingly. Uh, Stacks has been a, a winner lately. You know, since this little dip down here in March, it's you know up 47% in 35 days. Top to bottom, 73% just since this dip here. This thing has performed very well. But it is approaching the the lower band of this uptrend okay uh you know i two hour chart it, it doesn't look terrible uh if we if we lose if we lose the lower band the safer bet for the short would be to go off the loss of that low so you could go from there if we lose the band it's conditional it could bounce i'm not saying these are, things are going to happen these are conditional trades and i want you to be very aware of these levels Draw this uptrend, alarm this, alarm this, and alarm $2.94. And finally, the last chart I'm going to show you is HBAR. HBAR, uh, kind of a similar situation to Algorand, really, when you draw 
draw the triangle out, okay? It, in a descending triangle. A except this level, I mean, has been tested so many times. You kind of go back in history, uh, you know, look here, over there, there's more tests of it. Uh, the, this level has keeps has keeps coming up, keeps on coming up. You even see it here, okay? And here, all right. This level is at 1049. That is the we are worried, we are concerned level for H bar to lose. If H bar loses that level, that would be very unfortunate because H bar moved pretty quick. All right. You know, the, when, when the volume catches up, you see this low volume node. This is why I'm concerned. You see that it doesn't peak its head back out to around eight cents. You know, quick way to lose 20% would be to not react to the loss of this level. So there you go. It is that simple. I just want you guys to be aware of this. I'm not saying this is doomsday. I'm not saying sell all your bags. I'm not saying anything like that. But what I am saying is that I want you, my audience, to be well aware and prepared to react to the market. I'm not the type of trader that guesses. I don't guess. I isolate situations where the chart by a certain time has to go one way or has to go the other way. And I react to that situation. That's why I've been able to win so many trades time and time and time again, because I'm reacting to the market. I'm waiting for the market to tell me a signal. It is that simple. If you want to learn more, if you want to win more trades, if you want to learn more about my strategy, send me an email, ajalphagroup at gmail.com. Like I said, almost 100 people in there, over 90 traders already. We've been winning trades left and right. Get involved. My name's AJ Writes Crypto. I want to help you guys take your game to the next level. If you don't join the group, that's totally fine. But seriously, every alarm I just gave you, set that alarm and react to the market. Get rich. Don't get wrecked. Later.